Ziva for Once Upon a Timeline. Welcome, everybody. All right, let's see who's in. It says we have good streaming status. Always good. Need input. Oops, that's not the beginning. You guys have been talking a lot. Bill M.E. Need input. Ben. Autumn Nichols. Yashua Vencedor. Yashua Vencedor. Sharktakan Na, Christina Gerald, Andy Chuang, Matthew T, Kai Lucas Zachary. Welcome, everybody. Let's see what you guys have been talking about here. ET phone home. Yeah, that one changed partially last I checked. It was uh, originally only phone home, but now, well, last I checked, it was home phone for part of them. You have to keep rechecking, though, because sometimes they'll change on you. Y'all remember Darth Vader with one cape or two? Ah. All right, let's check that one out. Hmm. It might be hard to find images on that one. But yeah, one cape. Well, he's got two of them now. Hmm. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell, actually. Is that two capes or is that a big ruffle? Oh, oh okay. I don't remember him having a long skirt thing. Yeah, I don't remember that at all. Unless that's in the brand new ones or something. Hmm. Um, anyway, if that's in the old ones and I'm calling, nope. I mean, the first three that they, movies they made anyway, which is not the first three in timeline, but Star Wars has an even more messed up timeline than we do. I lived in Alaska 10 years, was the 52nd state. <laughs> I guess it's actually really weird for you if you were one of those two states. I'm from Puerto Rico. Our island was never a state. That would be hilarious because all local politics for decades are always fighting to be a state and the USA had never put minimal attention to this. That's interesting because way back in my timeline, and this, granted this is probably like 15 years ago, but what, what I heard then in that timeline was that um, Puerto Rico didn't want to become a state. They were happy just being a territory uh, and that there was been a vote to see if you wanted to become a state and you all had voted. I mean, the average less than half said yes. So basically you voted no. And that's why you weren't a state because you chose not to be. So I guess maybe in other timelines you did want to be, I don't know. Darth wearing a dress. It's in the old ones too, really? Yeah, no, no, that's, oh look, yeah, look, even these old action figures. Uh. <laughs> look, at, that looks so funny. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, is there any that he doesn't have it? Oh, my goodness. I'm not, yeah, look, I'm not really seeing any where he doesn't have it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, look. Wow, that's funny. 
Darth Vader is often changing. <laughs> like these gray stripes on here. They were really subtle at first, but they've gotten really blatant now. There was no gray stripes. All these uh, dots and colors and stuff weren't there. All the silver on his buckle weren't, wasn't there for me. <laughs> uh, some of these images, it makes them look dorky, too. Uh, why would you even need the second one? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I know. Who found that one? That was interesting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you guys are making me laugh first thing. All right. Oh, it used to be James Tiberius. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually feeling pretty good. My voice is really close to normal now. All right, so let's go back to uh, the original scheduled programming. You know I have to have some spiders on here. So um, this one has been making the rounds on Reddit. And um, heard of, I think I might have mentioned this one. or I first heard about this about six months ago, but it's... I actually heard about this uh, because my friend called me in a big panic because, you know, she's lived here her whole life and she's over 50 now. And uh, she said that um, a spider in, the ha in her house suddenly exploded into millions of little spiders. And she was actually <laughs> afraid that she was hallucinating because she had never seen anything like that. And, um, and I looked it up on Google and I found this wolf spider does that. So that was about six months ago. And since then, it's gone very viral. Uh, and here's an example of it. You smack oh, the spider come out of millions it. of little spiders come out of it. Oh, so this them. wolf spider basically um, carries its babies on its back. So there's millions and millions and millions of, of little babies on it. Now, in my old timeline, I never knew of any spiders that cared for their young. They would lay the eggs and bail, and that was the end of it. Uh, I've never heard of it before this. But uh, anyways, that one's kind of an older ME, but this one is a brand new one. Let's see, I'm pretty, this is one I found. And uh, it's, to me, even weirder. Meet the spider that feeds milk to their young. So a while back, I was talking about Birds produce a certain kind of milk in their throat now. Certain birds do, penguins do, so that they basically feed milk to their young. But they have a, they call it crop milk for birds. Well, now they have a spider that, that produces a kind of milk for its young. The act of breastfeeding is so fundamental to being a mammal that we named it after our after named ourselves after it mammalis translate to of the breasts but over time scientists have discovered that other animals also produce nutrient rich elixirs to feed their young including flamingos cockroaches and male emperor penguins i think cockroaches are the most recent one so the latest addition is a species of jumping spider um they found that during the first week, the mother was depositing droplets of fluid from her underside onto the nest that hatchlings would come and drink. After the first week, the offspring would drink the fluid directly from the mother's body. Adding to their surprise, the researchers found that the mother continued to provide the fluid even after her young began leaving the nest to forage at about 20 days old. The suckling finally ceased at 40 days, though the offspring still used the nest at night for another 20 days. So it... So I guess basically we've got breastfeeding spiders now. Uh, you'll notice that, that she, she cares for the young. They keep going back to her nest, uh, blah, blah, blah. It used to be that bigger spiders just ate smaller spiders, uh, and the parents did not take care of them. So a lot of changes there in the spider kingdom. Half political parties here want statehood, other want to remain a territory, but we have never made attention from mainland. Yes, we pay Fed taxes and have EBT in here. A lot of Walmarts. 
Yeah, I, I knew that you were a territory, uh, and if you're born there, then you're a citizen here, is how I remember it. But I didn't know a lot other than that. It used to be for me, though, that you guys were um, a commonwealth, you and Puerto Rico, I mean, you and Guam. So I, I, think, you, I think you still are. I think Puerto Rico still is a commonwealth, but Guam is no longer one. It's got, Guam became something else. But in my timeline, it was a commonwealth. Spider. Spiders have breasts. Well, they said that they have some kind of secretion like breast milk. So I don't think they have like a giant boob, but, but they're calling them breastfeeding spiders. They, have, they secrete um, a heavy protein material from their breast region. Oh, you didn't see the shell spider. Okay, so wolf spider, basically, there's one, the mother, and then there's all the babies just cling onto her back. And so um, if you smack her, then the babies will just all go everywhere. I mean, it's kind of like the stuff of nightmares. You think about it. You have one spider, and you oh, I'm just going to kill this spider. And now there's like 2,000 little spiders running in every direction. Did you see that spider that wrapped up a shell and lived in it? No, I don't think I saw that one. Ugh, can't do it with you in the way. Spiders drink human blood. What kind of a question is that? In Kenya, there lives a spider that drinks human blood. But fear not, Ivarka Kulivora is an indirect vampire. Okay, that wasn't really what we were planning to look up. Myth, spiders only suck juices of prey. Oh, that's changed too, did it? All right, I'm not seeing that one where you were, we were looking for, but... You can find this myth in many books. Even some scientists who have never bothered to look for themselves believe it. There is not a particle of truth in this idea. Spiders are not miniature vampires. All species, as far as we know, know, digest some solid parts of their prey, which makes it especially interesting in that the digestion process begins outside the spider, where anyone who wants to look can see how it works. Now, in my timeline, they, they suck the juices, and you could always see the whole corpse still there, dead, and sucked dry, but the whole corpse would still be there. Okay, so I guess in this timeline, they digest more of the, uh, of the body than interesting. So that's another ME I just discovered right now. Hmm, that's interesting. I'll have to take a better look at the leftovers. There haven't been a lot of spider webs around here in the last few years. I used to see a lot. Okay, so spiders only suck juices out of prey is now a common misconception. Now I'm going to have to look up this blood-sucking vampire. Oh, okay, so they kill mosquitoes. All right. How vampire spiders choose a blood meal. So what do they target? Mosquitoes that have blood? Jumping with spiders, also known as vampires, have a very specific diet. Female mosquitoes that have just fed on blood. 
A new study using Franken mosquitoes, glued together parts of different mosquitoes, finds that the spiders check for not only a blood red belly, but also also for girly antenna when choosing where to pounce. Uh, okay, okay, whatever. Never heard of that either, and it's creepy. All right, this one's a new one for me. Bees that do this weird shimmering thing. Now, this kind of an old Emmy and one that somebody else def- was the one who found on uh, on Yahoo on um, YouTube a while back was that they remembered, and this goes a long way back actually for me that beehives were just kind of a a ball shaped or barrel shaped blob, and inside were the bees. Um, but somehow, slowly over time, we've got morphed into these weird cone shape these weird like uh crevice shapes and weird amorphous shelves and stuff um i think that's a very old me i i think it it's like t- been happening for 20 years but uh so i don't think the younger people maybe will remember that old story but these actually these this kind of bee which i've never heard of was um apis dorsata the giant asian giant honeybee i've not heard of those but apparently they do this weird shimmer thing that's supposed to scare off intruders, and it's really cool. And I have, I have not seen this before, and I, I do study bees fairly regularly since we have several pet beehives ourselves now. Check this out. This is so cool. Redo. So basically here, um, these are all beads on the outside of this hive. And then when they see a wasp or other intruder, they um, flip up their abdomens in like this pattern. So, and then the pattern spreads. It's sort of like doing the wave at a concert, but they do it really quickly like this and they call it shimmering, shimmering bees drive hornets away. This video shows two 100, 130 centimeter wide nests of the Asian giant honeybee attached to a thick branch of tree. The nest in the foreground displays shimmering, a Mexican wave-like spiral or circular pattern. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm really suspicious that's probably new. All right, now this is the Saiga antelope. Uh, we've we've covered this one before as being an ME. When I first saw them, they just had a little bit of a weird nose. Um, you can see now the nose is getting qu- quite crenulated. Really weird looking here. The other thing I really noticed, um, someone had brought this up as an old ME on Redcon, but what I've noticed is that the nose is getting more extensive, but also this. Look at those eyes. When I first followed these, they did not have these weird bulbous eyes. So they're looking like more and more ridiculous every minute. Huge bulbous eyes. I can't imagine uh, what benefit that would have, but I'm sure that scientists will have some kind of weird story. I think I already got that one. Did I do this one? No. Okay. So yeah, Saiga, they they keep changing basically. That the ears, there's hardly any on that one. Even the ears are weird. Look, the eyes and the ears kind of match. Those guys just keep changing. All right, I'm going to delete those. Saiga. So anyway, yeah, we didn't find the spider that wrapped up in a shell, but we found some other stuff. Oh, yeah, pigeons. Pigeons do the crop milk also. That was one I covered a ways back. Yeah, lying signs and signs and wonders. That's a pretty wide open bunch of terminology too. No, didn't see the shell spider. Um, another one that's you probably have been seeing is the um, spider webs covering the trees. Spider web behavior. Oops. All 
right here. This pretty much shows it. So um, this one is a really interesting one because this is how it started for me. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before, but years, quite a number of years ago, there was a um, art project and the art project was this, some famous guy that I can't even recall his name now, covered a bunch of trees with a um, kind of a webbing like this and it was just supposed to be art. And then about a year or two later, this is a little bit, this is maybe about three years ago. I saw an image like this, and they said that a flood had caused all the spiders to go up in the trees and make webs. Now, I didn't really understand that because, I mean, how many spiders are, are there that there's, you know, that they didn't drown and they all went up into the trees? And then even if you were kind of in trouble, why would you coat the tree with web? The whole thing was just weird, and it was strangely reminiscent of this art project thing that I had seen. So they said it was a freak occurrence, but now uh, it happens quite often anytime there's a flood. So you see these all the time. It's ghost trees from Pakistan. Let's look and see what they have to say about the ghost trees. So that's another weird spider thing. Plus, you know, you've got the ballooning where they fly. Um, they're saying now they can fly up into the upper atmosphere. Um, using their webs. Not much info on that one anyways. Um, I think the last time I checked, there was some kind of electromagnetic thing that they could do using the ions or something. It's getting ridiculous. Oops, wrong one. All right. This one I've heard mm, the past four months or so. I call complete baloney on this. Noses and ears continue to grow as we age. The storyline now is that cartilage never stops growing. This is complete baloney uh, in my old timeline, but I guess here it's a thing. Do you think you stop growing at age 18? If that's true, how come the older you get, the bigger your nose and ears seem to be? See, now I have never heard this, that your nose and ears look bigger as you're older. I've never heard of anything like that. Okay, you might find some teenagers with large noses, but big ears are just not found on young people. What? I mean, I have never heard that. Your ears are your ears. Well, here's the news flash. It turns out that scientists in Italy have confirmed ears actually do grow as we age. Okay, so no date on there, but I mean, really, would it take that long to figure it out? Uh, and I, this whole thing about having big ears when you're older, it just, nope, I'm sorry, but it's just a big nope. But I, this one's been making the rounds for the last few months, so I thought I'd finally stick it in here. I call no, though. I'm going to reboot this. It looks like you, it looks like nobody said anything for 10 minutes on the, on the chat. That seems unlikely. Okay. This one, this one comes from poster on retconned uh, by the name of Senorita Pants. Uh, she posts a lot of good Emmys actually. This weird bird. I saw this one about a month or two ago, but basically it does this funky moonwalk thing. I'm quite positive we did not have this in the old timeline. So it kind of like so quickly that it looks like it just skitters around like a typewriter or something. So the latest cool bird to show up from the Emmy lands. I probably should have looked up what that thing is, but. Yeah, nope. Nat Geo Wild. Hopefully they won't come after me with all that replaying of their stuff. There we go. Much more chatting now. Oh, yeah, my voice should be back to normal. I just pushed the mic away. Apparently that fixed it. 
The weird thing is I had my mic really close when I first started my channel. And then um, the the arm, it's I just got this really cheap $10 um, arm that holds the mic. And it just was getting weaker and weaker. So slowly it just was pulling the mic away. So last time I'm like, oh, well, you know, you're supposed to have your mic right close. So I just pulled it forward. And I don't recall sounding like Darth Vader in my early videos. So I did not expect it to have that much effect. But anyways, so that would be why my voice is back um, versus last week anyways. Looks like a camel cross with an antelope. Yeah, it is. Um, Saiga are considered an antelope, but yeah. Um, they were only, they just were very normal, but just had a little bit of a smushed up nose when I first saw them. So it's an old ME for me, but like I said, they keep changing. I kid you not, in the summer, for the first time ever, I saw a bee the size of my hand flying around. Huh, I wonder, um, I wonder what one that one was. Looks like something off Muppets. Saiga, yeah, it's getting weirder, weirder and weirder. Jar, yeah, does it look like Jar Jar? That's a good question. It does, it does look like Jar Jar, you're right. <laughs> Except for it has the, the horns, but yeah, you're right, it, it is looking like Jar Jar. <laughs> <laughs> the mouth is more, you know, longer, but the, yeah, it is reminiscent. Well, I'll give you that one. I've seen the webs on bushes for several years, never before. Yes, it's been three, four years now since I first saw my first image of that. Yeah, what are spiders going to be doing 12 months from now? Yeah, for you, those of you who don't like spiders. I think I've covered before that, oh, it was probably about five years ago that um, spiders in my house would do that weird spinny thing if you scared them. I mean, it used to be that they would just freeze. But now, if you get really close to them, um, they um, do something in their web where they spin around and around and around and around. It's really weird. Spiders are going to rule the world. Yeah, they're going to beat out the cockroaches. But the cockroaches are also giving milk now. Um, somebody else brought that one to my attention a while back, but apparently cockroach milk is being marketed as a new superfood. I swear you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> you can't make this up. Superfood. In case you think I'm lying, I have to I have to look it up now. <laughs> Cockroach milk is this disgusting superfood trend that just won't die. <laughs> what the F is cockroach milk? Ah, the female Pacific beetle, one of the rare cockroach species that give birth to live bugs, feeds her babies milk. Uh, the crystals are like a complete food, proteins, fats, and sugars. They have all the essential amino acids. Uh, anyway, they're talking about, um, trying to market this stuff. <laughs> Yum. Yeah, have you seen some old people with massive ears? No. I don't really. I've just never heard that. I'm sorry. I'm just, I, it's, it's not in my timeline. You did not, con cartilage did not continue to grow. You stopped growing. That was it. You were done growing. There was no more growing of cartilage. 
I mean, maybe now, maybe in this timeline, but not in my old timeline. Ears kept growing. That's why the old Buddha had big ears, but never noses, according to Bill M. E. Well, you know, I, I actually covered that before that I um, noticed a lot of changes on the statues where the ears were really big. And I had no idea at the time uh, why they, I just, it was just another change. I didn't really have any clue why it would change. But now with the story that old people have big ears, so, I mean, I guess big ears are going to be a sign of wisdom. If you look at the um, Easter Island statues, they grew, they got ears. They didn't used to have them. And they got big ears, big, big ears. And then you look at um, Shiva at CERN, and, and that uh, he, I guess it is, uh, got huge ears now. And I saw that change not that long ago. So uh, it all actually makes sense now, in a, in a, a partially, if they're going to say that ears keep growing. Uh, could be a sign of wisdom and now you've got all these statues with this giant ears my belly keeps growing <laughs> yeah. yeah you know i'm telling you everybody i know is put on weight everybody no there's not one person having any success with their diet Oh, I don't know. You guys keep talking about Roy Schneider. I don't know that guy, so I can't even comment anything about any MEs on that person. I think the face shrinks and the nose and ears look bigger that way. Yeah, well, that's what I would have guessed, but apparently the story is now that cartilage grows forever, which is interesting when you really think about it because, I mean, there's another avenue for um, studying immortality. Um, will men produce milk next? Hey, that one's an old one. Um, man can lactate now. That one, you're, you're behind the times. I think we covered that one months ago. Men can lactate. Do, 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 do. That one actually came before the cockroaches and spiders, I think. Can men lactate? There we go. Strange but true. See, I've already clicked on this one. It remembers. Supposedly from 2017, males can lactate. Uh, blah, blah. So you need to have like a, I think it was last I checked, you had to need to have a dose of progesterone. Because you, apparently men have all the right... Uh, equipment for it, but they need the right hormones for it. Oh, prolactin. Yeah, you needed prolactin. The hormone necessary to produce milk. Now, it, um, I had start to hear, I had start to hear, I had started to hear stories of a few men that had spontaneously began to lactate. Um, usually there was some kind of story about how the wife had died and they were in some third world country and there was no milk and the baby was going to die. And then the man suddenly, miraculously, began to produce milk. So I think that's an up-and-coming storyline. There have been reports of men who were able to produce milk through extensive breast and nipple stimulation. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. But no one knows whether the milk was of the same composition or quality as the kind women produce. Yeah, I forgot. That's a more recent one there, besides just the prolactin business. Yeah, need input, you can lactate. All you do to do, apparently, is <laughs> do what it said there with the stimulation. You just can't make this stuff up, I swear. Been <laughs> having spontaneous lactation during work. Yeah, at least women know it's only coming when you're uh when you've given birth. Can you imagine if it just came any old time? <laughs> it's 
supposedly due to empathy. Yeah, the first stories I heard were um, that they said that um, it was kind of related to empathy and love and like that. But apparently it's gotten less less um, spiritual sounding in the more recent stories. Okay. All right, this one's a really weird one here. Uh, any of you geology buffs? I can't say I'm a total geologist, but certainly I've had many times to um, memorize all the different eras, and I kind of, you know, forgot a lot of the little details, but I still remembered all the names and the approximate order of things. And I can promise you that I've never heard of the Great Unconformity. Well, apparently there's a geologic time period called the Great Unconformity. Um, this is just not anything. I, I don't even know what to say about this. The Great Unconformity is one of geology's deepest mysteries. Yeah, it's a mystery why it exists. It is a gap of missing time in the geological record between 100 million and 1 billion years long, and it occurs in different rock sections around the world. When and how the GU came to be is still not totally resolved. Uh, how to erase time. Where the GU horizon exists on the planet, the difference in rock type above and below the horizon is striking. In the Grand Canyon, the Precambrian pre -Cambrian Vishnu schist is warped and twisted compared to the Cambrian Tapietz sandstone that overlies it. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the, the details, whatever, but the great unconformity, no. No, I don't buy it. Now, quite some time ago, maybe like eight years ago, I was watching and they were saying that there was a level of burnt material that happened around the same time frame. Um, all across the world, there was this burnt material. And I was like, how could I have never heard of that? And why didn't that ever come up? Um, and then, so they were saying it was clear evidence of some kind of um, like massive eruption or something like that where large amounts of ash was in the air all over the world. And I haven't heard boo about that in the last eight years. So I don't know if that was just a temporary timeline or what, but. So anyways, okay, the great, what was it? Unconformity, unconformity. Well, that would have helped all those middle of the night feedings. Now they tell us. Yeah, the men just don't want you to know that because they don't want their sleep interrupted. <laughs> I've read that about orgasm during giving birth too. Yeah, that's been the last year or so. Um, I'd never heard of anything like that before either. I don't know. I don't know what to think of like half the stuff I read anymore. I mean, some of these you could probably definitely think that maybe somebody s vastly exaggerated it or made it up for an article, but the scientific stuff like the great unconformity, I mean, I, I don't think that they're just going to make up a whole scientific theory that every, that's been the deepest mystery forever. I don't know. Darth Vader in a skirt and men lactating just made my evening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the the androgynous um, timeline continues, definitely. I have to say, it's starting to bug me a little bit, though, because my own face, it is just not feminine anymore. And when I look in the mirror, I mean, I guess at first I thought it was kind of amusing, but now it, it's really not feminine and it's starting to bug me. I might even start wearing some makeup or something because I don't know. You, you can't really, I don't feel like you can cl clearly tell that I'm female anymore and I don't like that.
more of the weird trans transgendering has been going on. Yep. Speaking of faces, I noticed mine has changed so much due to our cheekbones raising, sticking out so high. Yeah, when the cheekbones first was rising, I mean, I, I thought it kind of looked better. And I think overall my face is probably a better, a little better looking than it used to be. Um, this is kind of another thing that I was thinking about because about 10 years ago, I just had noticed that a lot of the really young uh, stars and really young models just had kind of a weird narrow face and big eyes and um the first few of them that i saw i'm like that's a really weird looking human they, they look like they're they don't have the uh the all of their face some of it looks like it's missing or something um, but then i thought well hey that's probably why that person's a model because they're unusual looking but I've really noticed that um, a lot of, even my own face is kind of following that pattern. I mean, obviously it's not going to be a model quality of face, but um, having problems are finding these everywhere. I've been hearing about two-headed things everywhere. And a while back, it was that human with the two heads. I, I assume you per people have seen the um, t kids with the... Oops, no with two heads I'm just gonna put this one in because I think most of you have seen it but it is just pretty strange so these two um what is that five or six years ago these two showed up suddenly they were already like teenagers for nearly 50 years National University has been helping people like you earn your college degree 130 ah! Abigail and Brittany Hansel were born Brittany's brother like to do your nails. Well, that's editing. Ah, there we go. Don't treat them different. Treat me like stuff. And so are the questions. So, anyways, um, then that was up? really shocking to me because in my old timeline, they always said that those people with two heads wouldn't be able to live. There'd be too many neurological problems, that kind of thing. Uh, but, and then that was just them for quite some time. Then about a year and a half ago that you saw that um, shark with the one eyeball. And uh, since then, it's really ramped up. So we've got a lot of two-headed creatures now. I've, I've covered before the Janus cats. They actually have a name for two-headed cats now. And usually the cats are just two, like one head with two faces. So for some reason, the cats aren't getting two of their own heads. They're just getting two faces. Maybe the head thing will come, though. We'll see. All right, so this article, marine biologists in Spain have come across a living, a real living two-headed shark. It's not the only one we've come across either. Actually, they're popping up more and more frequently, which should send a shiver down anyone's spine. All right, so there's some baby ones. Here's a two-headed shark embryo. There's another one. Bunch more embryos. All right, there's an older one. So this one, I'm pretty sure this is a fake image, but I stole it for my thumbnail anyway because I'm just bad. And uh, so I'm guilty of the clip clickbait this time. But there's been a lot of uh, creatures with the two heads. I probably should have put that two-headed goat thing up, but all right. The great unconformity. I can't get over that. The great unconformity. All right. This is a little, this looks like I left it up by mistake, but I actually didn't. Um, I'm planning a trip soon where I'm going to go visit Quartzite. They have a lot of uh, rock hounding and gem and mineral shows coming up. Now, I used to make this trip every year. It's been a few years. That's why I'm going for sure this year, but I haven't gone in a couple of years. It's been three years, I think, since I've been there. But I always take the same road. And today I'm looking at the map and it, it looks quite different. All right, this is the route I always take. Uh, the 15 to the 215 to the 10 freeway to Quartzsite. What's weird here is this 
blue area used to be more angled like this. Um, in fact, this used to be kind of a shortcut. Like I thought this was the, the 215 because this looked more right. But this is now this twisty mountain row that you wouldn't want to try to do. But um, it's got this huge right angle thing. It used to be more like, bloop, like that. It didn't have this right angle thing. Now, I think what's happened is, and we've discussed this before, but California, the underside has kind of gotten sucked in. It used to be more like this, and then now it's actually, it'd probably be for you guys the other way. It's now gotten more like that. So if, if this was way here, San Diego was way out here, and then you were going to Quartzsite, you would just go across like this more and then out like that. But now that this is sucked in, you've got this big right angle dog leg thing. So it's kind of tripping me out because this used to look more like when the 15 up here and then the 215 would have cut across. But now the 15 is here, and the 215 is almost in the same spot. So anyway, just more weird. It doesn't really look like it's shorter, but I'll know when I drive on it because I know how long it takes when I drive. But anyway, some more geology changes, basically. The bottom half of, the United, of California looks ridiculous anyway. It's got this weird angle to it, and there's a big chewed-out spot, but... Anyway, we can go on for that forever. Belinda, Belinda likes my haircut. Thank you. It's actually the same haircut I get every time. Then it grows out and gets all shaggy. My sister that's unaffected said, your feet and nose grow longer with age. It's total news to me. You did not used to have immortal cartilage. Uh, the whole idea that, you, that things continue to grow um, has been a big trend in this timeline, though. Remember they used to say neurons. You never grew any new neurons. And then, oh, neurons grow. You never grew any women, never grew new eggs. You were just born with a certain amount. Now you continue to grow. Um, now you can grow back fingertips, and you can grow back rib bone material. Uh, so apparently now ears and nose continues to grow. People have larger foreheads also. You know, I always had a big old forehead, so I don't think that that's changed for me, but maybe everybody else is just catching up now. I'm a man, and I'm getting prettier. <laughs> Does it bug you? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it. I guess I my identity, I felt like I was a female, and now I just kind of look in the mirror, and I don't know, changing wasn't that bad, but looking less female is starting to bug me. It's so noticeable on me, it made me look older. You mean the larger forehead? That would make sense because it's going to make you look like your hair is further back. Yes, my face seems different for sure. I think that the skull changes are really starting to make an impact now. Alien looking faces. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. That may, the male female face thing, I just, it's, it's really bugging me because it's getting pretty common now that I'll see a face and I will not know if that's male or female. And that never happened before. I mean, the exception would be that certain really slight men, when they put on tons of makeup, would be hard. But I'm talking about just regular faces in their regular state. And, you know, like Caucasian faces were usually fairly dimorphic, but not anymore. Yes, Los Angeles was definitely more north. And I think it was more um, west. The whole bottom of California has, um, well, it would be this way, but... It's, it's, it's sucked in, like it's sucked in its gut or something. A 
guy cut down the street, cut off half his finger. I guess it won't grow that far cut. Yeah, they're just saying tips right now. You might have to wait a few more timelines before you can have more. <laughs> Infinite solace. <laughs> Is that's the best time to come in for men lactating, huh? You know, I said that word so much that I, I'm almost for sure going to get... Um, what happens is on certain of my videos, even before the video is even done, I get a um, notification that it's not suitable for all audiences. And that happened on the last video. And uh, I, I can only guess that they're, they're using some kind of verbal recognition software or something. Now I can dispute that, but by the time they uh, get around to looking at it, it's got like already, I've, it's already missed like over a thousand views or something. Iguanas can grow their tail back. Now those, that's old for me that some lizards could grow their tails back. It would be kind of stubby, but they could grow it back. And Mexico in the lower half takes a sharper turn east at the middle. Yeah, it's got to bend way over there because it's closing up that gulf under there. And because South America is heading, well, that way for you guys. Uh, we're ever aware of Picard's crystal thing. Yeah, that one was new for me. I, I'd, I'd never seen that one. Japan is a wonderland in terms of ME. Japan is the most ME island in the whole world. I mean, it, the whole island's moved. There's way more parts to it. The shape's changed. All right, so where else do we have? Um, put you down there. type anymore all right this is another weird animal one came up a few days ago so apparently caterpillars have this thing where they all migrate together and the top ones slither along on top of the bottom ones and then these come back up and then they slither on top of the the new bottom ones and then the, supposedly the storyline is it makes them all go faster. Now, I don't know why nature wouldn't just give them faster legs if they needed to go faster, uh, but it seems a lot simpler that if faster is good to just get faster legs, but instead uh, they've developed this uh, mosh pit thing. And they call it a conveyor convoy or something, I think. There was some kind of weird name for it. Uh, there was a whole scientific explanation about how it makes them go faster. Anyway, that's all new for me. And there's there's more than one kind of caterpillar that does this too now. Star Trek has so many Emmys as bad as Star Wars. You know, I think all the, the movies really do. You just have to have a lot of people really know the movie. I mean, there's just dumb ones. Like, for instance... The color uh, on Doctor Who, the color of the TARDIS for me used to be a lot bluer. And now if you look back in the history of it, it was only really blue like a really long time ago. Uh, but actually I had, I don't know if I had just done a shift or something, but I had seen somebody who had made a, um, a shed in their backyard look like the TARDIS. And I was thinking, haha, what a doofus. They, they painted it the wrong shade of blue. Then I saw another TARDIS somewhere. I'm like, well, nobody knows what shade of blue. Everybody's a doofus. And then I found out that it was me that didn't know the shade of blue because I swear it changed. Now, I used to paint houses for a living, so I'm really sensitive about the shade of colors, and I'm very good at seeing different shades of colors. So I am very, very positive that the blue changed. Um...
I don't even know how what to type in here. Tardis. Is. I want to see, yeah, something like this. Loop. All the different Tardises. All right, now what I remember is this color and being really this color for quite a long time, but it, it wasn't this color until, let's see, if I can see a bigger image of it. Since Tom Baker, and I didn't watch that many of his things, it had definitely been this color for quite some time. This is the right color. And I, I don't remember any of these other colors. It was It was this color. I don't remember it changing colors. I mean, it was just the one color. I mean, I don't even really get why it would keep changing colors when they just make the same thing over and over again. I don't know. Like, see, that just looks totally wrong. Of course, that one's a real old one, so. But um, none of these look right. This one, this one's not bad. I just don't. Just don't recognize those colors. It's just weird. That one's a couple of uh, years old for me, though. That was a while back when it changed. C-3PO now has black palms. Yeah. Yeah, that one's a little bit older one. C-3PO and R2-D2 changes a ton. The feet, it's all plasticky looking. It's got blue all over it. Used to be silver. C-3PO looks so different for me now. It's got that third leg that comes down. Didn't used to have that. Um, just so different. Has the state next to California always been Nevada? Nevada used to be up higher. Oregon used to be more on the side. I think it kept changing, and I, I was always so confused. But, I mean, next to me is Arizona, so I'm trying to remember how it was before. Nevada was way up here. I think Oregon was in here somewhere. It might have been Nevada, Oregon. Washington was over there. California had the whole... Almost the whole West Coast. Washington only had a little tiny strip at the top. Well, that's changed a lot. Washington had a little strip, and then it would come down around over here. Uh, it, it wasn't like all up in there. Now, actually, when did that even change? It, it still had a strip for me for a while, and that's interesting. Okay. So the way they change is they like suck a little bit of themselves in there and then they slowly get bigger and bigger until the whole thing is there. It's like an amorphous blob movement style. So yeah, this whole mess has totally changed. There was a whole bunch of states in here and then California just hogged all this. So, um, and it used to come down. More. It used to be straight at the top here, straight at the bottom. Um, the United States used to be straight across up here, too. Canada did not have all that. Florida was way bigger. Uh, this funny peninsula thing was way smaller. I don't know. It, it's, it's such a mess. It, it's, you can't even... Where to even start? The boat pilot tells us about the orange and green iguanas being different sexes. I freaked out. An orange iguana. Yeah, I've covered those before. They've got orange, green, and blue iguanas now. Uh, no, we only had greens, greens, and greens. That's all we had. Suddenly we have orange, green, and blue. That's not right. But you know, the rabbits around here keep changing. They just, they're getting like, I saw one this morning. And it was so orange in the back of the head. I mean, so orange. It looks like somebody dyed its head or something. It's just not right. They're, they used to just be gray with a little bit of white on the tail. They've got so many weird orange bits on them now. And it's bright. And it's all of them. It's not just, you know, at first it was just a few, but it looks like it's all of them now. 
Move Montana to the right and Wyoming and everything else under it up. Let's see. Montana to the right and everything else up. Yeah, New Mexico I remember down. Colorado I remember being closer. Colorado and Oregon, I remember those being closer. I do remember ne Nevada bordering, but I remember it being more up here. Oregon over there. Wyoming further away. I think, geez, I think Texas was a little closer. It's it's kind of, you don't realize how hard it is when everything's switching around all the hot. I remember Idaho back there more. I don't remember Idaho being that close. I remember Montana being close and Colorado being close. Idaho, I remember being more out here. Ugh. Texas next to the coast. Yeah, you're right. It does have a big coastal region now. Yeah, it used to be up. It used to poke into um. Used to poke into Mexico. I don't remember it being so coastal. And all that flooding that Texas has uh, now. It, when the first flooding happened, I really thought it was the first flooding. I'm like, wow, that's really bad because Texas never had flooding before. But it, it always did in this timeline. Texas has always had bad flooding. So maybe that's part of it being over um, more to the east now as it's more, gets more flooding. Texas was more up. Yeah, that's a good point. Texas was more up because Florida was the bottom of the country. Look, Texas is below Florida on a lot of these maps. Look at that. Yeah, you're right. Good point. Who who said that one? Texas was more up. Yeah, that was that's a good point. Bit of venom. Good good observation. Yeah, cuz Florida, that's kind of a new one too because last I checked Florida was the bottom. But Texas is lower now and on all of these maps. This one, yeah, it's still a tad lower on that map. It's lower on that map. It's lower on every map now. Interesting. Yeah, and since when does Mexico have that kind of border? The border across Mexico used to be fairly flat. That's interesting. Does that look right? It does not look right. Wow, that's pretty new too. And what is, oh, that's weird. Is that Louisiana sticking out down there? Yeah, Louisiana, this this bit with this Louisiana, looks like it's giving the finger down here or something. Weird. Yeah, that's kind of new too. All right, yeah, good find, good find. There's always more to find. Colorado boarded Canada next to Montana. Montana got friggin' huge. I remember Colorado and Montana next to each other. I agree with you on that one. Those two are strongly associated in my memory. I don't, and I remember Wyoming out here. Idaho and Wyoming out in the middle. Nevada was over here. Arizona was over here. New Mexico was on the bottom. But I remember Texas more over here. I thought it was more like California, Arizona, Texas, and then maybe like New Mexico on top. I don't know what Idaho is doing over here. It's just, it should be way over here. I always thought it was like in the middle of the country with their potatoes. And Washington and Oregon were up here. Um, this also, Michigan, this one, this one's an older ME, but Michigan didn't have like these two sections before. It was just one state for me. That split Michigan thing is such a trip. The moon face changed and its craters change. It's always tilted. The moon is changing constantly. The craters are always changing. 
I lived in British Columbia. It used to be Washington right below and Oregon right beside Washington. And Nevada underneath Washington. And that sounds about right. Um, so if you look at this map, can California was way up here. There was just a, um, there was like a finger of Washington that came across and then the rest of the Washington was over here. Nevada underneath, and then all of this was California. That would be about right. Then Oregon and Colorado were somewhere um, around here. Oregon on the top. Colorado might have been on the side, but they were, Idaho was not there. That's just weird. Oh, yeah, Tataria. I'm going to discuss Tataria a little bit. Tartaria showed up about a year ago. Uh, somebody on Redcon noticed Tartaria and the whole giant storyline of Tartaria in uh, in Russia. We were talking about how big Russia got and um, how their the whole shape and everything is different, and the size of Kazakhstan is massive now. What's strange to me is that Kansas City is shared between Kansas and Missouri. I lived in Kansas City when I was ten two separate cities. Um, yeah, I know nothing about that storyline. That's weird. Two parts of Michigan is normal for me, but I live there. Yeah, I don't know. No, that when I was a kid, there's no freaking way. All right. So got that one. All right. Yeah, actually that's what's up next. Um, it was Cyber Six Sapien commenter on my channel who mentioned Tartaria. I think that that has been making the YouTube rounds. Um, it was kind of a minor conversation on Retcon, and it's probably one of the reasons I never really brought it up. And a lot of people were on there saying, "Oh, you're stupid. You just don't know history," and blah blah blah. But um, I've noticed lately that there's just suddenly been a lot of talk about Tartaria in the regular media, and then this came up. Tataria tablets. So there's this um, artifact thing called Tataria tablets, dis reportedly discovered in 1961 at a Neolithic site in the village of Tataria um, in Romania. The dating of tablets is difficult as they cannot be carbon dated. The tablets bear inside symbols and have been the subject of considerable controversy among archaeologists some of whom claim that the symbols represent the earliest known form of writing in the world. The symbols are thought to be Vincha. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Vincha symbols, although some scholars have considered them to be Sumerian. So here's an um, a image of these tar Tataria tablets. Anyway, so that seems to be the way it is. I mean, an Emmy kind of sneaks into existence and then about six months later, it goes super viral. Maybe even, oh, maybe only a short time later, it'll go super viral. Two of the tablets are rectangular, a third is round, and they are small. Only two and a half inches across, have holes drilled in them. Three have symbols, one only, ha inscribed only on one face. The unpierced rectangular tablet depicts a horned animal, an unclear figure, and a vegetal motif, a branch or tree. Anyway, so we might hear more about this Tataria tablets, I'm thinking. Okay, so next one. Got you. Okay. This one was another commenter. I think that someone bought, brought this up. How do you spell barbiturates? For me, it was, uh, this was on the, on the last um, live stream. Somebody was mentioning it and I didn't know the point of it, but barbiturates, how do you spell barbiturates? Uh, for me, it was B-A-R-B-I-T-U-A-T-E-S, barbiturates. Uh, it was always that. I'm, I'm positive it was barbiturates. 
It was U-A-T-E. But now it's barbiturates. Barbiturates. With the, there's an R in there now. So, um, and every place says that it's barbiturates. Barbit, bar, bar, it's hard for me to say it. Barbiturates. Barbiturates. What are barbiturates? Yeah. It used to, that R was not there before. I have trouble saying it. I still say it like the old way, barbiturates. But barbiturate, yeah, Mandela Mile. So this one was from uh, Bombshell Conspiracy Theories, yes. It's a big one. Barbiturates is now barbiturates. Cupy's on. Thank you, Cupy. Cupy's my uh, top um, sponsor on my, um, what do you call that thing, Patreon account. So thank you. Florida is 22nd by area yet now. Yeah, Florida's tiny now. It's just got such a short little nub. And now with Texas sticking down lower than Florida, that's a trip. I wonder if TARDIS has something to do with Tartaria. You know, people are people were like, when we first brought it up, people were like, well, where did you think tartar sauce came from? I'm like, oh, okay, then it must have existed because there's a thing called tartar sauce. I do remember Tartaria as being kind of like a little tiny region of of the Soviet Union area, like in ancient times. But now it was like this massive region. So it's it's changed a lot. I mean, I'm not going to say I never heard of it, but I just, it was tiny little thing before. All I know is I miss my old home badly. Yeah, I don't know what to think. I'm... For some reason, there's a, I have this weird feeling like it was just, it was something bad happened and that's why we had to go. So as much as I do miss it, and I wish I, there's a few things I wish I could just have, like it, I could just see it, you know, like my old map. I really wish I could see my old map again, but I don't know if I want to go back because I have this bad feeling that, that it, it's, it would be bad. And I, I don't know if that's just my imagination or what, but. Did we die in 2012? I don't think so because um, a lot of the Emmys are a lot older than 2012, like the Mandela one. So, well, it's been going on a while. No Tartars. Yeah, see, there was Tartars, but it wasn't like this huge monster empire. But the Mongolians did a lot better in this timeline too. They conquered a lot more area. And a lot more. And they've got their own country now, of course, whereas they didn't before. Finland has a small minority of Tartars, but they are like Finns, integrated. I always feel like I was pulled away from my home and stuck in this hell. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't know what to think. I just have this feeling like it can't go back, though. And you think about it, we've had to move. We've moved so slowly. A lot of people have had a lot of physical side effects. Um, I don't think it's that easy to move. You can't, I don't think, because of that, I don't think you could probably just jump back. But like I said, I do, I really wish I could just see, you know, see a few things again. I wish there was a residue map of the old world before 2016. Yeah, I really wish that like somebody could draw the old world. Do you know you can hold breath underwater for a long time? Yeah, you know, actually I did a video on that um, maybe about a year ago. It was up to like 20 something minutes. There was a tribe that could, had special um, adaptations and they could hold their breath even longer. It was ridiculous because the old, the, the old record for me was literally, it was like three minutes and 49 seconds or something. Really short. Uh, and I have noticed lately that I can, I had noticed in recent years, it seemed like I could hold my breath more easily, but uh, I had no idea it had gotten to supposedly that long. 
Everybody got so nuts so quick, especially on social media. Yeah. Yeah, the politics, the fighting. Um, people don't even make sense when they're arguing their points sometimes now. I mean, just absolutely hateful over tiny little things. Like somebody makes one little mistake and they should be uh, thrown in prison for 30 years. I'm not talking about politics right now, but just little things. Like there's just so many, um, some dad falls asleep and his kid runs out the front door and uh, now he should be put in prison for 10 years. I'm like, stuff like that always happen. And, you know, my, my mother would probably be in prison like 500 times over by now if, if all that rules were in place when I was a kid. And I think everybody else's mother would be too. Although it's shocking that even a developed civilization is Tataria at cannibals. I've been hearing a lot about this whole cannibal business. Um, it used to just be a few weird tribes did it. Uh, now apparently it's a lot of different groups in history. I'm sure they're going to say, oh, it was just covered up before or whatever. Whitewashing of history, but... I also notice I joke and gag super easy now. Oh, that's interesting. Need input. I have the same problem with um, to teeth brushing. Uh, it's getting hard for me to brush my back teeth. On certain days, for some reason, my brain is really tolerant of putting the toothbrush back there. And uh, other days, it's not. And so I have to try to brush it really fast. And I never had problems with that before, with the gagging. Um, so I don't know if it's just me and you or if it's a thing, but yeah, it's, uh, definitely easier for me to trigger the gag reflex now. The other thing I noticed for quite a number of years, but it, all right, it says OBS reconnected, food down right. Uh, that has, it has changed back now though. So it, it's going down normally now. I'm not stupidly inhaling food all the time. I was starting to think maybe I was having some kind of neurological problem because I was thinking, well, I don't know, when you get older, is your just your neurons are kind of weak about switching back and forth, but I swear foods taste different if I put them under my tongue. Huh, I'll have to try that. Food tastes different, period, for me though. Definitely hindsight would be great. I'd love a map of the old world and I would have written down a lot more biblical scripture. Yeah. You'd have to sketch. Maybe if we had sketched the map, we would have had it. I don't know. You can't trace though. And, and some people have even noticed some changes in, in, in handwriting things. So I don't know how perfect it would be, but it would have been great if we could try Friggin' my teeth are still repairing now. That's new. Yeah, I'll tell you, uh, my teeth are getting um, screwed up as the timelines merge. I used to just have one tooth that was a little sideways in the front here, uh, but you couldn't see anything on the tooth line. Now it's like four of them are sideways. One is, this is recent too, one has gotten really high. So now the, the tooth line is not straight anymore. I don't like that. Um, the, I don't know if the Emmy is going to cost me a lot of dental work or what, but my teeth used to be really good. And, um, now they are looking pretty scraggly. So I'm not really appreciating that. I don't know if it's because my face seems a lot narrower in the last six months, especially and even the last month. And so I guess there's not room for those teeth now. Um, you know, I, have all my wisdom teeth still, and most people had them pulled. And then this timeline, a lot of people aren't born with wisdom teeth. They say like 35% of people don't, are not born with wisdom teeth. So I'm, I'm going to be, maybe that's why I'm kind of a freak in this timeline. I've got my wisdom teeth, and this timeline, there's not enough room in the jaw, I guess, for them or something. If I wake up with all my teeth back, I'll know something is up. Yep, my top teeth are all jacked up. Oh, really, you too? 
Yeah, it's by bottom teeth. I mean, that's one of the reasons I never had dental work done because it was just one little slightly cur slightly sideways tooth. You couldn't see it. I'm hoping that um, the Emmy has a plan for that crap. I mean, I, if, it, if it will take out the back wisdom teeth and then straighten out my other ones, I would be fine with that. Funny the tennis tell you they're in the business of saving teeth, but you try getting a regular clean. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I really haven't been a big dentist fan. They're always trying to do something. They always want to yank out my back wisdom teeth, even though there's nothing wrong with them. But I mean, they maybe they have a point in this timeline. Pinky toe bone connection is almost not connecting anymore. Bill Bird, stomach or stomach with an E? I did not have an E on the word stomach. I'm assuming it's still like that. Man, I'd flip out if there's an E on there now. An E looks like stomachy to me. Okay, yeah, no E for me. I mean, who knows on other timelines, but... I, I definitely have some spelling Emmys that are my personal Emmys. I don't know if anybody shows them. Like Amethyst, for me, the E and the Y have shifted spaces. And since I sell Amethyst online, you can bet that I noticed that yeah, suddenly everything was reversed. I really hope my pulled wisdom teeth won't come back, Shari D. I don't, I don't think so because this timeline is doing away with wisdom teeth. Like I said, 35% of people now are born without wisdom teeth. That used to be 0% in my old timeline. Everybody got wisdom teeth. I have 30 teeth, including the removed four wisdom teeth. Yeah, see, mine are still back there. And that might be part of the problem. I'm waiting for the upgrade where humans are born flexible without the need to work for it, like cats. Yeah, and like we can have muscles without having to lift weights. That was always uh, stupid. I always thought, why do we have to work so hard just to be healthy? When cats just lays, lays around all the time. jumping around suddenly tons of channels speak of the mud flood yeah I talked about that last week actually the other day I looked at the mirror and I got the mirror eyes do you have real dark eyes maybe dark eyes are going to get the mirror eyes now teeth seem to be shifting along with the shifts yep I hope it's plan it's got a plan for fixing my my screwed up lower teeth that it's messing with though like suddenly this one is way up this one's it's actually getting worse quite bad quickly so yeah I do know that we can uh, hold our breath for like a half hour now I did a video on that a while ago, like a year ago. I did a video on that half hour baloney. Need put inputs off. Yeah, you don't want your wife to get mad. Definitely smart man. Who was born with any teeth? Okay, well, technically, yeah. I mean, they weren't. The, you're born with your teeth back inside your gum line, and then they come out. So technically, you are born with your teeth. They're just not sticking out yet.
Yeah, my wife gets mad over Emmys. Yeah, I know. And there's almost nobody. I, there's really nobody I can talk with about it in real life, which is sad. Um, some people, actually a lot of my friends just get scared and they don't want to talk about it and then they'll actually just like leave. Um, only a few of them got really mad, but most of them just, they just look scared and change the subject or something. Maybe if I pestered them more, but I don't. But, you know, I don't have any, like, significant other, so things are, you know, more tense when you have a significant other. All right, Tartaria. Got that one. Barbituates. Ah, oh, this one. Okay, we had my we had spiders. Now we have to have snakes. Somebody put an image of a bald python on uh, retcon the other day, and I'm like, what the hell's wrong with his face? See if I can find that nice image that I found before. Do, do, do. Oh, there were so many good images last time I plugged this in, too. Oh, come on. Do, do, do. I'm going to be mad if the Emmy is hiding. The okay, here. Here, 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 here. All right. This is what I remember about snakes. Yes, they had two nostrils. And then they had their um, heat-seeking organs. Um, and the heat-seeking organs were just an area on the face that had heat-sensing heat ability. There wasn't like a giant hole there. Um, lately they started calling it pit organs and I can't remember what they called it before, but then I started to see like a second set of holes there, but they, originally there was not holes there. So then they had like a second set of nostrils, you know, there'd be the real nostrils, then the, the pit organs. But lately what we're getting is there's a bunch of pit organs. So there's like holes traveling all down the side of their face. Uh, and in some of the lighter snakes, it's more obvious. Let me see if I can make this image any larger. No, didn't work. Uh, okay. So basically, this snake now has, these red arrows are all the pit organs. So he's got th three of them on that side and three on that side. There's like holes peppering down the, the side of the face now on a lot of these pythons. I've never seen anything like that. They didn't even have a dent for the... Um, heat-seeking region for me originally. So um, I was looking, and there were quite a few images of guys with multiple pit organs now, and I guess that's a thing. This one shows it a little bit. Look, one, two, three pit organs there, and there's going to be three there. Now, I think this is the nostril up here, but uh, the pit organs just... Um, I'm not sure what's up with that either. What's up with that tongue thing? Oh, mouth rot. Still, that looks like a... Do, do. Was that one has teeth? No, wait, that's not even a snake. So anyways, yeah, there, there's got, they've got a lot of holes now, basically. The other thing I had seen, and I'm trying to remember which snake this was... Now, when I was growing up, that they would always say that the lower jaw could um, unlock and then swing wide so that it could eat things. But in this timeline, um, the two jaw sizes sides actually can split apart and then independently move like this to bring in prey also. So that's another change for me with the interior. I don't know if I can find that one or not. This one was actually on TV, too. Let's see if I can find an image. It 
See, for me, they would unlock, but here it's just attached by these tendons here. Two pieces connected in front by an elastic ligament. Okay, so you see here, there is no lock and unlock here. It's just ligaments in the back. And so now the front can split out also. And then these two here can operate independently like this and pull it in. Each side can move independently. Now, I did not have this in the old timeline. No, no snakes could do this. It's, it's pretty interesting. So it's a lot more sophisticated. And they showed it like this in the movie. It was some kind of um, documentary thing. So anyway, that's a different thing for the snakes for me. All right. Another thing I've been seeing a ton of just the last few weeks is... Um, fat animals and then wild animals that are fat so we're all kind of used to seeing like fat house cats and fat pet dogs and you kind of blame that on domestication um, but wild animals used to have a natural ability to not get fat and even a lot of dogs have that you i'm sure you've had well depends on what dog you've had but most of my dogs no matter how much you feed them they won't get fat they'll just they'll feel full they may even want to eat it like one time I gave my dog some really good stuff and she really wanted to eat it, but she was full. So she'd just like lick it sadly because she just couldn't eat it because she was full. Uh, and that's how wild animals were for me. They just didn't get fat. They would just stop eating. Um, then about three months ago, I saw this horse that was super fat and I thought it was some kind of... Um, Photoshop joke. I actually didn't believe it, but this is what I saw a few days ago. All right, now granted, horses are not wild animals, but I'll get to some of those in a minute. Overweight horses are the new normal, vets warn. Look at that fat horse. I've I have literally never seen a fat horse before a few months ago, a truly fat horse. I have never seen one. They would, if you fed them the wrong things, they would get sick, they might die, they get all kinds of problems. I have never seen a fat horse. And then um, a few months ago, I started seeing a lot of images. So they're saying in the UK, they got a big problem with fat horses. If you look at these, it's ridiculous. Look at that horse. I have just never seen anything like that. What the heck is wrong with this one? Hmm. I've never seen anything like that either, actually. Oh, this is the image I saw a few months ago. I really just completely assumed that that was fake, and I, I don't know now. I have not been able to trace the origin of this one. If you've got other kind of fat horses back there, I, I just assumed that was complete bull because it was twice as fat as anything. I've never seen a fat horse, and now you have this, which looks completely ridiculous. I, I do not know if that one is legit or not, but there's a whole bunch of other images of really fat horses, which makes me suspicious that that one could have been real. I mean, look at how fat these guys are. The heck is that? What that thing on its head? That's weird. I must be one of those giant fat bulls now. Right, there was one. Oh, this one. This one is ridiculous. So, I mean, I can't imagine riding a horse that was already that fat, for starters. I can't imagine that horse could carry its own butt, not to mention hers. I guess hers might be minor in comparison, but how is this horse even mobile? In my old timeline, it would it would just it wouldn't be able to carry that much weight. There's just no freaking way. Look at this thing. Look at this one. I mean, are these all fake? It looks like these are legit from the best I can tell. Um, so anyway, that, that one then starts to look a little bit more 
I mean, some of these are saying are pregnant, but I don't know what to say. It's just looking uh, crazy. Okay, so there's these giant fat horses. The horses all around Vermont have been getting a little too fat for the next horse riding season. A lot of them are having trouble just standing up. They've got all kinds of lame excuses. It's uh, been too rainy. It's been too warm. But all of those things have been the case in the past. We've had plenty of El Ninos and all that, and we did not have a horse the size of a house. So, all right, so we've got that. This is another one. I assume this one's still fake, but this one was making the round. There's been this sort of weird meme of fat animals lately. But it seems like it's now making it into um, the real world. Okay, so this one. Let's see if I can find it. Yes. So this one was on a few days ago. So I guess wild chonker. I was like, what's a chonker? I guess it's a slang for like... Uh, being fat, basically. So it looks like it's some kind of lynx. Obviously, very fat. I have never seen a fat wild cat before. I've never seen a fat lynx. Uh, and this isn't just a little fat with a little tummy, like a fat, like a lion. When lions get fat, they just have a little tummy. But, um, and that's all I've ever seen with cats is they'd have like a, a, a stomach, but their whole body wouldn't be like this. Don't screw with a fat predator. All right, so I've never seen anything like that. Uh, this one I saw about a month ago. It's weird because I've never even seen a fat monkey before, and then the first thing that I have to look at is this guy, this huge fat monkey, monkey sent to fat camp. I guess they just fed it too much is the story. This is ridiculous. A chunky monkey dubbed Uncle Fatty is set to be released back in the wild after successfully completing a weight loss boot camp. So, I mean, the story was that he was getting too much people food, but, I mean, monkeys have been in, in cities have been stealing people food for at least a decade, and yet I've never seen anything even close to this. It's completely insane. Look at that thing. So anyway, I'm calling balonies. Not the monkeys. Counting my teeth for the first fifth time. Are you serious? Nobody with 42. I'll, I'll count them. I don't remember now. I'll count them. I'm not going to count them right now because I have to leave. I'll have to leave and look in the mirror and waste time. Some of the changes to bird wings means they probably shouldn't be able to fly, but still do. The atmosphere is different now. If you watch birds, they flap a lot less. I remember birds flapping constantly, but now they they do a flap and kind of a swoop and then a flap and then a swoop and like that. They don't flap as much as they used to at all. And their legs are still twigs. Yeah, yeah, good point. Fat bulls I've seen, but not horses. I mean, they, you know, I've seen fat bulls, but not as fat as there are now. Maybe because they eat meat now. <sighs> you know what? You eat meat uh, without glucose, you don't get fat. That's why the keto diet works, because you just have to k cut the sugars. A uh, horse eating um, a lot of grain, maybe, but they're, they're saying that they're gorging on too much grass. I've never heard of anybody getting fat on grass, but. How can those thin legs support all that? Exactly. I mean, that's like, that horse is double, it's got to be like double its weight, and then you put a rider on it? I'd much rather see a fat horse than the thin ones. True, true, but. In my old timeline, wild animals could, they would just stop eating if they were 
getting too fat. They would, that was just an instinctive thing. They would just stop. Just like a lot of my dogs. They just, no matter how good the food was, at, the, at some point their brain would be like, no. Crazy World of Normal Helen has to go to work. Thank you for coming. You can always check out the rest of it on the uh, reruns. Have you seen the horror film Teeth? Yes, yes, yes. Like penguin mouths, they have teeth all up inside the um, roof of the mouth and all the way down the throat. Same with the turtles. Show you guys in case some of you haven't seen it. This is not in my old timeline. See if we can find a good image of it there yeah no it did not have teeth all down the th inside the mouth and back the throat that's penguin mouth mm. this is the stuff of horror films right here this is a um, turtle mouth Giant turtle. I'll give you a couple nightmares. A lot of the sea creatures are getting the endless teeth now. You can get a, let's see, leatherback turtle. Look at that. Come on, people. Even the inside of cow mouths have a bunch of weird wiggly side didn't have that I mean in my old timeline everybody had just one row of teeth and that was it Let's see if I can find a good image of the cow mouse I think I covered this one a while back here all this this was not there I mean, all this um looks like it's growing too a lot of the ruminants now have these they're not teeth exactly but they're like these weird protuberances it's just weird Look, see, all on the tongue. I don't know where that's going. I don't know what that's going to turn into. I mean, what's the point of having all those? There's not really a reason for it right now, but I have to imagine that there's going to be some point to these. Um, they look like plasticky protuberances or something. Anyway, weird, weird. Turtles and birds never had teeth. Yeah, birds. There was a couple of... Um, fish eating birds that had teeth for me uh, but it wasn't really teeth teeth it was like a bony protuberance but not nearly the number that have it now Has she ever answered one of your comments? Plume. I already answered that one about the holding of the breath. I've I already said that twice now. So, so yes, I answered them. When did birds get teeth? Uh, yeah, they've been growing them for a while now. But, you know, I didn't have nearly so many fish with teeth, too. I mean, they have that one fish that has a giant um, tooth that actually goes up through the top of its skull. And then, because uh, there's not enough room in its mouth. So it goes up through a hole in the top of its head. Let's see if I can find that one. Jeez, this is looking like, this is looking like my teeth. My teeth are doing that now. They're getting squished out. Okay, anyway, so we don't need to see that. Look at that thing. Lizard fish. Yeah, see, look at that. There's all those rows of teeth. I just didn't have that before. The, the sharks with all the crazy teeth didn't have that before. 
piranha did not have teeth like that. They had more ordinary looking teeth. Oh. See if I can find that one with a... I think it might be this one. If this is the one, eh, that one looks like it goes outside. There's one that has such long teeth that there's a hole in the top of the head. And when it closes its mouth, the teeth stick out the top of the head. Uh, did not have that before. Okay, anyways, got you, got wild animals, got you. Okay, this one is a addition to a trend. All right, this started with dolphins. Originally, it was just dolphins that did this thing where they would blow the bubbles around fish and kind of um, trap them inside a bubble net and then eat them. Well, whales do it now. Humpback whales are doing the bubble net. Yeah, there's some images of them. Uh, this is the first time I've heard of whales doing it. It started with just... Now, when it came out, it was just a few dolphins knew this unusual behavior, and it was um, just this one clan of dolphins, and then that's been spreading and spreading, and now we got humpback whales. So they're ringing in the, I think it was the krill, and then uh, they would gather them, and then they would all chomp them down. They're calling it bubble net fishing now. It didn't have a name originally. Bubble net fishing. The other thing I've noticed is humpback whales are looking really flabby. The it used to be a real solid creature, the sound uh, of but now they're getting like belugas. Song. They're getting just kind of like flippy floppy. Let's see if we're going to get the bubble nets in the next. Extraordinary one. level okay, of intelligence go. and so cooperation. Supposedly they make these like um, nets of bubbles. The lead so whale dives like first. Video, but is the group. So there they are making the bubbles. Anyway, so that's a new one for me because now it's um, whales. For me, it was only first nobody, then it was just dolphins. Now we've made it to whales. Uh, this is not killer whales. These are humpback whales. The bears are getting so fat that they fall from trees. You know, my old timeline bears sucked at climbing trees, so they wouldn't be up there to start with. But let's check that out. Yeah, that's another interesting one because bears are pigs and you're supposed to gain weight, but... Okay, I'm not really seeing it though. Hmm. Anyway, there's not a lot of news on it. Okay. Ah, okay. All right, so now there is a condition where women can't hear men talking. We can hear other women talking, but we can't hear men talking. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. It's called uh, reverse slope hearing. Women cannot, woman cannot hear male voices, rare condition. So the storyline apparently is that she can only hear lower sounds. Or wait, no, she can only hear higher sounds. So the low voice of a man can't be heard properly, but the higher voice of females can be heard. 
She woke up one morning and noticed that she was suddenly unable to hear male voices. She could not hear her boyfriend speak. La vida no siempre te puede dar segundas oportunidades. It's a rare condition known as reverse low hearing loss. RSHL is very rare. ¿Estás bien? It's an estimate to have affected around 3,000 people in the United States and Canada. I don't know. I don't know why you would suddenly not be able to hear lower voices. Like, you just wake up. It's not even a slow hearing loss thing. You just suddenly wake up and can't hear it. So anyway... I thought it would have been the reverse that Three men would stop hearing Charlotte, their North wives Carolina talking, was born but deaf. in this timeline, it's the reverse. And that one was from Bob Bobertson, so we're getting on to the Bob Bobertson finds now. And this is another Bob Bobertson find. And this is kind of a... Uh, Laurel and Yanny kind of thing, which seems very common for this timeline. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to have to make it so you can hear it. Wait. I think that means you can hear it, desktop audio. Yeah, okay, maybe you always could. All right, and I need to start at 39. You know what? This is not the right video. Oh, yes, it is. It is the right video. Okay. I'm going to put my headphones on so I can hear. Okay, so this weird piano thing, supposedly... Normally you can't hear any voices in it, but if you read what it's supposed to say, and this is what's weird, is it really jumps out at you. Uh, it's kind of a Laurel and Yanny thing. Like it's, it's like, it's freaky. And I don't think that this was in my old timeline. There's something different now about, um, they're really emphasizing how much the brain creates sound. Before it was just a mechanical process. But now they're really emphasizing this whole thing that the sound is mostly here. And uh, I don't know if that's a first step into saying, you know, like thought creates reality or something. Um, it's a really interesting trend, though. All right, so we're going to play it. Hopefully you can hear this. Let me turn up the sound. Piano shows a similar phenomenon. It's hard to make out what it's saying, but as soon as words are on screen, you begin to hear it talking. Okay, so what it said there is we declare that, we proclaim that we are all responsible. All right, so let's see if you can hear it say that. But as soon as words are on screen, you begin to hear it talking. Hearing is all about... I don't know if you could read the tiny writing, but um, I would suggest you go here. It's called Will This Trick Your Ears? Audio Illusions. It's on YouTube by ASAP Science. And it's more kind of a Laurel and Yanny thing. It's, it's freaky. I can hear it without looking. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, anyways, off with the headphones. The way my computer is set up, um, if I change one little thing, it screws up all the programming. So I just, um, if I unplug this mic, then my, my uh, OBS Studios is, does not get my voice anymore. So. so instead of unplugging the mic, I'll just put the headphones on. Oh, this first story changed. The Chinese woman first reported her boyfriend had to feminize his voice. Then it jumped to stress caused. Now they are working. It's genetic. Yeah, interesting. The Emmy can't make up its mind, huh?
maybe there's a change in the range of sound humans can hear. Well, that's always possible, but doesn't really explain how you suddenly hear words that, I don't know, I don't think it explains it, but... This is ridiculous. There's not even much difference between many men and women's voices. Not anymore. I think that's another thing that's starting to get more androgynous. Before only eye tricks, now also, also ear trickery. Yes, yes. You just always see the um, visual illusions only. Singer's voice ranges has changed. My voice range has really changed. Um, I'm much better at lower ranges now. I didn't really have a lower range singing voice before, and now I really do. Anyway, I still have some more to go through, so it's I know it's two-hour mark, but you'll still have a little bit more. Okay, so got that, got that. Okay, this one, this was another one I could have put at the thumbnail. Now, I kind of predicted this one. Remember a while back when they, when they showed the... Um, the fetus of the one-eyed shark that was found. And they kept showing it uh, that it was a cyclops. It just had one eye in the middle. And it just, it was so viral. I'm like, I bet you we're going to see more one-eyed things. Because they always said that it would never survive because the amount of neurological damage that would, uh, would be so screwed up that it could not live. But we now have one that did live. And this one was found by Bob Bobertson. Oops. It helps if my fingers are in the right spot. That should be enough. All right, so this one-eyed calf was born, and supposedly it lived. Oh, and there it is. So giant, big cyclops eye. Um, there's a video somewhere of it. It, it barely moves, but it does breathe and move. Uh, no word that it had died yet. So it, it lived at least for a while. They're saying it's being worshipped, so, I mean, it must have lived for a number of days. This is the first I've seen of a live one-eyed creature. Oh, I think this is the video. Let's see if I can get it to run. We'll mute all the boring parts. Okay, here. As a god in India. A newborn calf with just... I don't think it actually shows it moving. Yeah, no, it's just showing a lot of the same image. All right. Okay, there's... You know, that looks like a different one. This one's a real light one here. This one here looks like a whole different guy. So there's two of them now. Very rare goat with one enlarged eye was born on May 10th in the northeastern Indian state of Assam. So that's a different guy here. Oh, that was in 2017. All right, that, that was not there in 2017. So that's over a year old. So this, this one-eyed thing is definitely going back in time. All right, so it's alive. Looks like a dog. The face is really weird. All right, so that's number two of them. Cyclopia can also affect horses, pigs, and cows. Most animals die within a few hours, but this little one seems to be doing all right. All right, so anyways, yes, I think we're going to see a lot more one-eyed creatures. There's two of them already. I, this one I'm going to take credit for predicting. Not that it was that hard, considering the ME is just doing weird stuff everywhere. All right. 
So that was Bob Bobertson who found that first one, and this one I just saw. Uh, this is kind of a minor one here. Do you guys remember how long sperm could survive uh, once removed from the original location? This one was um, by Jonathan M. Beardsley. Now, there's differing... Um, uh, how long can... Oops, didn't put the whole thing in there, did I? For me, it was three days. It could only survive three days. Uh, here they're saying five days. Uh, it was always exactly three days. Uh, the, if they had to get through to the egg within three days... Now it's five days, and some places even have it like uh, a little bit larger. Can it really live to seven days? Um, it can be found with weak motility in tubes for up to seven days, whatever. Uh, it wasn't seven days, that's all I have to say. Kind of a small one, but it was three days. All right. This is an interesting one, and I think it's in progress. Now, a while back, um, some of the other YouTubers noticed that they were saying that the, the heart doesn't really um, pump, it twists, which was a, a big ME, that it actually twists in place, which sounds fairly ridiculous. Um, but now, some places are saying that it doesn't even actually pump blood and that the blood can kind of go around by itself. And I, I'm having really kind of trouble understanding it. Maybe a phys physics major could major. But basically what they're saying is that they see circulation in a, a human fetus before the, the heart starts to even do its, they're calling it pumping even though it's twisting, before it even starts to do its thing. So um, not only does the heart not beat, but it twists, but... Now they're starting to do away with the whole idea that it pumps blood, it seems like, and that the blood can go around by itself. That'd be kind of convenient. The heart is not a pump. For century, centuries, we've been told that the heart is a pump. Guess what? We were misinformed and may have had deadly consequences. Uh, Thomas Cohen offers up a daring claim that the heart is not a pump. This gross misunderstanding with its attendant medications and risky surgeries is the reason heart disease remains the most common, blah, 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 blah. Um, rather, the, the heart is a muscle that holds back the bud like a dam and then converts the flow into a vortex. This creates a suction effect which sucks the aortic arch as one sees and without generating pressure helps the blood on its way. The reason for the vortex creation is complex, but that is the generative shape in nature. When nature wants to create or enhance life, it uses vortices. It is no surprise then that this vortex is what is created by the heart. Um, there's actually a lot of, of like stuff on here, kind of not just here. It sounds totally ridiculous, but um, I found a lot of sources giving evidence about it and kind of pushing this. Um, the number one argument was that circulation can see, be seen in a fetus before the heart starts doing it, its pump action behavior, which there's no real explanation for that I could see. I mean, maybe they're trying to say that it is from the umbilical cord, but... In 1932, Bremer of Harvard filmed the blood in the very, very early embryo circulating in self-propelled mode in spiraling streams before the heart was functioning. Amazingly, he was so impressed with the spiraling nature of the blood flow pattern that he failed to realize that the phenomena before him had demolished the pressure propulsion principle. The blood was, okay, so this guy proposed that blood was propelled with its own biological momentum as can be seen in the embryo and boosts itself with induced momenta from the heart. It also stated that pressure does not cause the blood to circulate, but is caused by interrupting the circulation. 
experimental corroboration is here and presented. And there, there's a fair lot of fairly good sounding evidence for it. So anyway, uh, I definitely keep an eye on this one. Uh, I think this one might be up and coming. How can we trust the internet anymore? I mean, you can't really, but some of that stuff I've seen in real life. So, I mean, Emmys that we've seen on the internet have shown up in books on our shelves. So it's not just the internet. And, you know, like I can feel my ribs have moved. I can feel my heart feels different. Um, my heartbeat is a lot stronger now. You can really hear it. Um, there's just a lot of things that have changed. You know that they've changed. Not just on the internet, but right on us. If you have multiple partners, there can be all kinds of swimmers chilling. Yeah, I think I covered that one a while back. You can get pregnant and carry a baby and then get pregnant again. So you can have two babies now. One one it's, is three months further along than another even. And uh, different fathers and all this yah yah. That was never possible before. Once you got pregnant before, you weren't going to get pregnant again when you still had one in there already. You weren't going to have different sized cookies in the oven in the old days. Is heart left or in the middle? Always was left, 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 left. Just like the, just like the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Then it went middle. Now it's it's gotten so big that it's kind of like the end of it is scooting out left. But I mean, maybe it will be left again if it keeps growing. It's way bigger than it used to be, and all those huge vasculature structures on the top they wouldn't have all that. Waiting for the pancreas to improve. I can't wait to be cured. QP. Oh, that sucks if you have uh, if you have diabetes. You know, I think that it's moving in the right direction because originally they said that once your islet cells were dead, they were dead and they were totally dead. Now they're saying, oh, actually people have some functioning islet cells. Oh, actually they can regrow in certain situations. Uh, so it's kind of squeezing that way. The best birth control was always being pregnant already. Yeah. Yeah, really. Twins with different fathers. Yeah, that that's already been reported on. Um twins they were fraternal twins with different fathers. I saw that one about three months ago. Did not used to happen. In fact, it was only like a year or two ago that they were saying cats could do that. I did not catch that as an Emmy, but thinking back on it, they never used to say that even about cats. Can anyone see better like infrared range now? Uh, you know, the last 10 or 15 years, I get this word... Like, uh, it, it's supposed to be dark out, but I get kind of, I call it purple vision. It's kind of a lavender glow to things. And I did look online and I found, um, other people mentioning it. Let me see if I can find that. Um, and it looks like the color that's right before infrared. So I don't know if it's some kind of infrared thing. And their visual, this is the first I've seen of this visual purple. I'm not sure what that is. And their visual purple at night. Huh. Actually, I don't understand any of that, those sentences. Why do I see purple when I close my eyes? Purple spots. 
Why do I see purple lights at night? Now, last time I looked, there was a few people saying they also saw it and absolutely zero explanation. I, some, some, I often see purple lights in my vision outdoors at night. I think some people call them auras, but to me, they look like any other light, only purple. Is there a scientific explanation? Could be phosphines. Nope, it's not phosphines. Anyway, uh, if anybody finds an explanation for that one. Rhodopsin, commonly called visual purple. I've never heard of Rhodopsin caused, called visual purple. That's interesting. Visual purple. All right. I think that's the night vision stuff too. Unaided night vision, even now, is subject of controversy. I do think this is one thing. It's kind of ridiculous, but um, I got some of that trail mix and it had red M&Ms in it and it was really freaking dark in the car and I love M&Ms and I found that I could see the red in those M&Ms and I could get them so uh, I could not do that before so I do think my night vision has gotten better um, that I should not have been able to see that red in that level of darkness I don't know what's going on with the purple. That's been a long time. I, I suspect that eventually there'll be an explanation for that purple. I see all sorts of light since childhood. I have been able to play with it. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? I, I have... I. Ah, it's me. Sia sees the purple. To me, it's very lavender. It's like um, the spectrum. Let's see. It especially looks purple when light reflects off of something else. So it's very much in here. It's this color, very close to the UV spectrum. So I especially see it like, say, my headlights bounce off a sign, and the street signs have that reflective paint. And then it looked very purple, especially around there. Look very purple along um, the painted lines on the street. But sometimes if I relax enough, it'll suddenly just look purple everywhere. Um, it's, it's a weird thing, and I, I used to play with it more. It's been a while since I've been goofing with it, but I, it's like if I really wanted to see it, I would see more of it kind of a thing. So I don't know what's up with that. I used to just, I've, I've long had weird things with my eyes, so I just kind of uh, write a lot of that stuff off as my own weirdness. Purplish and greenish. Um, when I'm not driving and it's a little bit lighter out, I, I see that green all the time. And uh, that is more recent for me, the last year or two. Maybe that's why there's purple butterflies, translucent butterflies. There's everything butterflies now. So yeah, yeah, I've been wondering, um, especially since the ME, if that was going to be like some UV vision. Unfortunately, um, it doesn't show me anything that I couldn't see before. I don't think. I guess I, I would have to compare. I mean, I don't know if my vision is better with the purple vision or not. I call it purple vision. Anyway, something to keep an eye on, pardon the pun. Okay, got you.
All right, I'm almost done. So I've covered before about the crossbreeding in this timeline is uh, quite a bit more substantial. You've got a lot of intercat crossbreeding, um, wolf dolphin crossbreeding, growler bear, which is polar bear and um, grizzly crossbreeding. I guess it's not that surprising, but uh, there's just a lot of crossbreeding. And now there is narluga, which is part beluga and part narwhal. So um, narwhal is an Emmy for a lot of people, including myself. Belugas have changed drastically. I've covered that in the past. So apparently they can now crossbreed um, ligers and tigons and growler bears. Oh my. Hybrid animals have long been a source of public and scientific fascination. These species aren't limited to land animals. Beluga whales and narwhals have known to mate to produce narlugas. So they're saying they found one. It was older. Uh, they're, they're sort of blaming it on global warming, but then they're saying, who knows, maybe it's always been a thing. Uh, they, now, they're not really describing... It's funny because they said they're interesting creatures, but then they didn't really describe anything interesting about them. I mean, apparently, as best I can tell, they're not saying the Narlugas have the giant tusk or anything. Um... Although the initially babies born to narwhal and beluga parents may be stronger than those that are the result of in-species breeding, hybrid animals don't have evolutionary survival traits. See, this is sort of weird because they're, they're actually saying the crossbreed is stronger. Uh, this is the first time I've had that really said about crossbreeds. Its snout and lower jaw were particularly burly, and its teeth shared some similarities with both narwhals and belugas. It doesn't, however, have the narwhal's tusk, according to blah, blah, blah. This change is happening so rapidly that it doesn't bode well for adaptive responses. The narwhal tusk contributes to breeding success. Uh, okay, whatever. I, I just think it's interesting that they're saying that the offspring is stronger. So there we go. That's the last one. Let's see what you guys are up to over here. Narluga. It's fun to say, isn't it? Narluga. Narluga. Oh, that's another thing. Odin was talking about silence. Um. The last two weeks, the ringing has been really loud. I'm usually pretty good at ignoring it because there's always ringing, but it's just been really loud lately. Really loud. I don't know what's up. On and off. But a lot of times during the day, too. I was knocked out as a kid when I bumped my head. When I woke up, everything was the wrong color for a few minutes. Huh, interesting. Yeah, one of my friends told me when she gets really mad, everything actually turns red. Uh, when they, She said that that saying, seeing red is no joke. You actually see all red. I had never heard that that was a real thing before she said that. And that was actually only about a year ago. So I, I'm suspicious if that was in my old timeline because this friend of mine that I have now is... a is um, in many ways different than my, my old timeline version of that friend. Um, in this case, luckily not in a bad way. Uh, she's, this one is a lot more kind of got her crap together, I would say, but, um, but it is interesting. I was driving home last one day and my vision was green for a few minutes. I was trying to figure out what was happening and finally decided that I was seeing the shadow of trees in the road. Huh. Yeah, shadows aren't usually green, though. Um, 
They might call it like one of those visual migraine things. That seems to be a big thing for this timeline, uh, visual migraines. You see all kinds of weird crap and they blame it on a visual migraine. Although weirdly, you won't always get an actual headache from a visual migraine, uh, but you might just feel just a slight tiny headache or even none at all. Some people get visual migraines without ever actually having any migraine pain. Um, there's different, I have not heard of just seeing one color, but um, some weird patterns like this are, are more common for visual migraines. Uh, just messed up vision bits, basically. But I have heard um, some unused, that there can be, like that's just the average ones, but there can be all kinds of weird ones. Ocular migraine. Ocular migraine is generally means a headache is accompanied by changes in vision. But it's often used two different conditions, migraine aura, which is usually isn't serious, and retinal migraine, which could. So I'm talking about migraine aura. Flashes of light, zigzag patterns, plant, blind spots, shimmering spots, or stars. You may see those things. So I don't know. There's basically, an, a, they have an explanation for everything, and their explanation is a scientific sounding word with no actual explanation behind it because they really don't understand vi visual migraine, migraine aura or anything. But it makes it sound like they know something because they have a fancy word for it. Oh yeah, that's just migraine aura. No big deal. Well, what's migraine aura? Well, they don't know. I don't have headaches, just sinus, yeah. Yeah, see, they're saying you can have eye migraine aura without really having headaches. So I'm like, how is it migraine related? Well, they don't even really understand migraines either. So anyways, I think the point is they have a fancy word for it. So, and they're saying it's not dangerous. So that's always nice. You're not going to die tomorrow or anything. I still think it's probable that those who experienced ME died in another timeline and switched here. I, I would not be totally surprised. I can't say for sure. I don't have any times when I'm sure I should have died, but there have been definitely been times when I could have died. Um, that's probably true for most people. I mean, did you ever get real sick and then get better? Well, maybe in some timeline you didn't get better, you know, things like that, so... Oh, you guys got a bunch of interesting visual things. Yeah, I thought it was just me. I wonder if we all have weird visual things. The rounder pattern looks very like the hypnagogic images I see and relate to shifting when I see it whilst awake, often a dark purple shimmering. Um, I don't know if I've, I've seen, uh, people say if you take a lot of drugs, sometimes it looks like the walls are breathing. Um, they look like they're shifting. I've seen that before, even though I didn't take any drugs. Uh, it's just sometimes, it's kind of trippy. Or you get the carpet, a lot of times it's the ground. Um, I have a lot of weird after images. I see uh, extra colors around things. It's sort of like looking through a prism a little bit. Uh, when you look through a prism, the light is split and uh, it, the, where the light lands is not all lined up. So you see like kind of a rainbow aura around things. I see that to some extent. I, it actually was worse when I was a kid. Um, I, I later related it to, they say that your eye lens being a single lens is going to split the light the same way as a prism. And that somehow the back of your retina sorts out the fact that light lands in different places on the retina and brings it all back together through processing. So consciously, you do not see the fact that that light has been split. So what I thought was happening was that my brain processing was not fully compensating for the single lens effect of my eye. 
uh, which sounds very nice and scientific and logical. And it did fit quite a bit with what I was seeing. But I, I really don't know now because, you know, the ME and everything's weird. And I don't know. But I'm, I'm, I've long been, um, I've long noticed that I just have weird visual things. And they're, they're trying to shift through the years. And I haven't gone crazy. And my vision's not horrible otherwise. So I don't worry about it anymore. When I look outside, I see deformations as when I see when there is a fire. I'm not sure what you're trying to say, Intrepid, on that one. You mean like heat wave effects? I sometimes get heat wave effects even though there's no heat wave. I see gray spots pounding in my head. Yeah, I don't, I don't know on that one, but it looks like a lot of us have weird stuff. I have severe headaches, but I've never had visual migraine or aura. Interesting. I could have choked, hit by a car, pneumonia, and TB, and dang fever. I think that's all of my memory of uh, ways you could have died. Yeah, there was one where um, I could have been killed by this guard dog um, that was very vicious and some reason chose not to bite me because it was supposed to be put up and it wasn't and I was out in the yard all by myself and I ran into this dog and it didn't eat, it didn't eat me and it had bit a lot of people really bad before but it didn't bite me now we always chalked it up to the fact that maybe because I was a kid or something you know dogs can be kind of funny that way sometimes but um so there was that one there's been a couple times when I got really sick and then suddenly got better so I would I would say my most likely deaths um, could have been there. I think everybody's probably had some close calls in the, in the car driving. So there could have been those. I know some YouTuber with live shows that keeps changing with each shift. I wouldn't be surprising. You know, Mandela affected when he was still, um, on regular YouTube. Uh, he, for me, he, he would have uh, his left eyebrow would sometimes be missing half of it, and then it wasn't. Now, I first knew him, he had his whole eyebrow, and then he didn't. Then he got it back, then he did it. And I should have asked him that second time. Well, actually, I did ask him that second time. I should have asked him that first time, but I didn't, why he didn't have part of an eyebrow. And then it came back, and then it disappeared again, and I asked him about it, and he just said some vague thing like, oh, yeah, me and my wife know about that, and blah, 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 and I'm like, you know, it was live streaming, so you can't, I can't force him to answer my question, but he didn't really quite answer it, and I don't know if maybe he didn't know the answer, but, but now, you know, he's, last I checked, he has his whole eyebrow back, so, if you ever see him without his left eyebrow, ask him how it happened, because I'm really curious, and then when I see another version of him, I'm going to tell him what happened. Oh, this is an interesting question. Did anybody wake up in the middle of the night feeling freezing, even though it was very warm in the room? Shari D. That's been a big problem. I mentioned it last week. Um, for the, I've, It's been a big problem for like a month. I, I think I'm finally out of it for like maybe even almost two months. Um, and it wasn't just at night, though. It, sometimes it was in the middle of the day. Um, I was really having temperature control problems. I got a ton of blankets, I got mittens, I got all this stuff um, to survive through it. And then it would lift after, you know, a few hours or something. It was weird. So I talked to my friend, and uh, she said she's been experiencing it. She doesn't even believe in the ME. And she uh, had talked to some of her friends who said that they'd been, they call it just like really feeling the cold this year or something. So I think there's something going on. I've actually been having both hot and cold periods. Um, I usually have the hot one in the middle of the night. So I don't know. I mean, they, they say, oh, it's just menopause. But I mean, I've had those hot things for since the um, late 90s. And they really haven't gotten any worse. So I, I actually, if anything, they're better. So if it's menopause... It started in the late 90s, and now it's going away, which doesn't sound very logical. Intense chills, yes. I mean, there's, there's definitely going to be, if you look into the whole acupuncture thing, 
uh, they have their version of an explanation for those with the hot and cold um, sensations and treatments. I, I think it's really just, I don't know, I, I think it's related to the ME personally. We might be forced to be dealing with things or something is awry, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it sounds pretty vague, but... I've been wearing socks to bed because of getting cold. Yeah, yeah, I never wore socks before. And I've lived here, you know, 20 years and I hated socks and I have been wearing them to bed. I've been getting hot too. Hope it's not menopause yet. I, you know, I don't know. Everything's getting blamed on menopause now. And then it's just like 30 years of menopause. Yeah. I have the neon colored wormhole thing while trying to astral project. Yep, I think, uh, well... That one's pretty common for weird dream things and lucid dreaming and that. But, I mean, the migraine aura is supposed to be when you're awake, but. I'm 34, so better not be. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I think that it's just become, there's certain t terms that they use to kind of explain away everything. Like whenever the weather's weird, it's global warming. Um, any weird species behavior is global warming. Um, any changes in history is um, whitewashing and um, hiding the truth. And um, any weird physical symptoms is you're getting older or menopause. And uh, so there's just like these catch-all kind of solutions for everything. Oh, and other changes are blamed on uh, fake media. That's another one. And uh, there's like these, not to say that there isn't truth in some, you know, there's a, a grain of truth down there. The media is sometimes fake, certainly. Uh, there is menopause, one would assume. But it, they become like excuses for everything after a while. And then people don't question it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it must be menopause. My bones have been aching too. Huh, interesting. Ghosty 333. Yeah, my bones have been kind of peaceful for a little while. Knock on wood. Alrighty, well, you know, it's late and I'm going on a trip soon. So I probably will get way behind on uh, comments on the channel. And I don't know uh, how much caught up I'll be by next Wednesday. I'll try to catch up. But I'm going to be uh, out of town for a while. I'll be back for next week's stream, though. But I'll be uh, quite possibly behind and super tired. So we'll see. Hopefully I can catch up in two days before. But that's, um, you saw my trip planning there. So I will be going there and having fun. My dreams are now like movies coming in parts and are about my family. I could never remember my dreams before. Huh, that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know why, Bill Bird, there's always like really good comments at the end at about 2.40 in the morning when I'm sure I have to go to sleep. But I guess that's just the nature of the universe. All righty, so... Oops, that's the wrong one. I think it's time for me to check off. So thank you. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline.